become a millionaire. At least that's what they say you can be when you get into cybersecurity. There are a lot of times when you hear people say cybersecurity is an easy, high paying career. Stuff like getting six figures on your first day right after graduation. Now that might be possible for a small number of you guys. But if you're like me, then you're most likely starting off your career less than that. So when you're starting off at this level at the bottom, can you realistically become a millionaire just by working in this career path? Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jono and I've been working in cybersecurity for the last two years. And in this video, we'll go through the steps and processes that you need to be doing to become a millionaire in cybersecurity. Now, just a disclaimer, I haven't reached this stage yet, but I've worked in this space long enough to gather enough realistic numbers to create a trend to project my timeline which I'll share with you guys. So stuff like where my salary is currently at right now versus from the beginning, and how long it would take for me to reach the millionaire status when you take into consideration on stuff like salary raises, cost of living, and so on. To make things simple, the numbers we're working with are only on the salary, so no additional income from other stuff like investments. So what we're gonna see is the worst case scenario. And for me to classify myself as a millionaire, this means having a million dollars as pure savings in my bank. The first thing we need to talk about is the salary. And to understand the salary, we need to understand the different levels of a stock analyst. We have the tier one, the tier two, and the tier threes. The tier ones are your cybersecurity beginners, and everyone goes through this stage. Your responsibilities are quite simple, so stuff like monitoring alerts and dashboards, triaging incidents, and doing basic level investigations. Now, if we take a look at the salary range provided by Glassdoor, we're looking at around 55K to 80K a year Australian. For me, personally, mine was on the high range, so this is a good starting point. So let's agree on 80K as the starting salary. Usually, it would take about at least a year or so to level up from tier one to tier two stock analysts. Now for the tier two stock analysts, the responsibilities include everything from tier one and also a higher level understanding of the security systems involved. At this level, you'll be doing in-depth investigations and handle incidents by yourself. With the added responsibilities, Glassdoor is saying the range is between 63K to 90K. At the end of my first year, my salary was actually quite close to the high range again, so we used 90K for this one. So in about a year's time, my salary jumped about 12%, which is really good considering it was my first year in this industry. Okay, so where I'm at right now, personally, I think I'm at tier three stock analyst. We don't really have this type of official ranking system in my company, but generally the responsibilities that you have is a good indicator. So for me, my responsibilities right now mainly revolves around threat hunting and building automations to support this process. I'm also involved in a lot of meetings like work on different types of systems, solutions planning, working with clients, and usually higher priority incidents will be escalated to my side. So I think that's also a good indicator for this tier. And of course, this also includes all the responsibilities from tier one and tier two. I guess if you're not sure which level you're at right now, Another good way to think about this is if your manager or your team members are out of office, how much of their responsibilities can you handle? Do you have enough background knowledge to be able to answer all the questions on their behalf? So you might be really curious on what salary I'm sitting at right now. Glassdoor says if you have about four to six years of experience, the salary is between 82K to 111K a year. I'm sitting slightly above the mid range. So let's say 100K, so it's a round number. That's a jump of about 11% from my last salary. Now you might be thinking how I'm able to get at least 10% increase in salary a year. I actually started in this company in a graduate program. So about 10% increase while I was in the program and then another increase after I finished the program. I think now that I've been in this full-time position, it's safe to say that the annual increase is not going to be as high as 10% going forward. So to be conservative, let's take an average of 3% a year. So 100k salary with 3% increase every year, let's do some projections. Before we get into it, these are the numbers that I've done up based on Australia. Numbers might differ depending on your country. And these numbers assume that I'll be staying in the same position until retirement, which in Australia is about 67 years old. So these are the salary figures. In 25 years, I would have doubled my salary. And by retirement age at 67, I would be earning about 360K salary a year. Now that might seem like a lot, but these numbers are pre-tax. When we include the superannuation, which is our pension for my American friends, and also our tax on top of it, which is at least 30 to 40% in total, my take home salary drops by a lot. Now we can see in 25 years time, I'm only taking home like 128K salary. And at retirement age, it just becomes 183K. For my non-Australian viewers who are thinking about moving to Australia, our tax is really high. So just a heads up, and we're not even done yet. 
we haven't even included the bills for our living expenses. On average, when you include your mortgage, your water bills, electricity, car payments, and all that stuff, it adds up to about 70% of your take-home salary. Let's take a look at my yearly savings without the bills. In 13 years, I would have a million dollars in my bank account. And by retirement age at 67, I would have $4.7 million in my bank account. So just a reminder, this excludes any investments, and that includes bank interest. Now for the fun part, let's throw in the 70% bills for living expenses. And that pushed my millionaire status back to 32 years from now. I don't know about you, but that sounds way too long for me. So, realistically, if I continue my path right now without any changes, it will take me at least 32 years to have a million dollars in my bank account. If you're like me, then you definitely don't want to wait that long to be a millionaire. Now, what I would personally do to speed up this process is to aim for 20% salary raises every two to three years. Obviously, if you're doing the same job for the same company, then you're not gonna get this increase. This means you have two options. Either upskill yourself in your current company to justify for a promotion, which might not be as easy for some people, or go with the second easier option which is to change company. I can already hear some of you guys saying, if you stay longer in this company, they'll appreciate you and reward you more. At the end of the day, a company only cares about their bottom line. So likewise, you should do the same. After all, you can't pay your bills with friendships and vibes. So my personal goal is to aim for 20% increase every three years at the very least by achieving the two options I mentioned earlier. Going back to the numbers, we can see this reduce the years by a lot. Now I can be a millionaire in 22 years which went down from 32 years. That's a 10 year drop. But still, 22 years is a very long time, which is why this next step is very important in dramatically speeding up the process. The next thing I would do is to start investing my money. You've probably heard of the phrase, let your money work for you. This is very true as you probably would have noticed that I haven't even included the cost of inflation. The inflation in Australia right now is about 2.8%. That means every year your money is reducing by 2.8% in the form of buying power. Given the fact that the average annual salary increase is only 3%, you're realistically getting nothing. And that means you need to invest. The easiest way to invest as a beginner, which I've personally done before, is into the stock market, specifically the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is an index fund that tracks the top 500 US companies based on their market capitalization. And on average, the annual return from the S&P 500 is about 10%. So taking away the 3% inflation, we have about 7% increase a year. This is perfect for beginners who have minimal knowledge in the stock market because your investments are diversified into 500 companies. Basically what I did was to download any stock trading app and every month when I get my pay, I would put 50% of my savings into S&P 500 under the ticker name SPY. Now the amount depends on your risk tolerance. You might have heard some people say you shouldn't put a huge chunk of your savings savings into investments. To me, I think that's a very boomer way to think about this. It's all about the risk to reward ratio. When we look at the S&P 500, in the last 10 years, we've only ever seen a year that has a negative 13% return. The lowest positive return is 0.1% and the highest is 39.3% in 2021. So for every $100 you put in, you could potentially lose $13 for that year, but you could also earn $39. That to me is a good risk reward ratio. And that is something you need to do to dramatically speed up the process to become a millionaire. If we take a look at the numbers, this includes the previous 20% increase in salary every three years on top of the 10% increase a year from the S&P 500 returns. We can see that in 16 years, I'll have a million dollars in savings. We've literally reduced it by six years just by putting it in what I consider to be a safe investment. Now, this has been how I invested for the first year when I started. But after doing more research and learning about the stock market and other investing opportunities, I realized I really don't want to wait 16 years of my life to reach this goal. So this next step is what I'm currently doing right now which is going to have the highest annual returns and will be the most aggressive strategy. This will probably not come as a surprise to you guys, but as of now, my strategy has been replacing S&P 500 with Bitcoin. I know Bitcoin has a bit of a stigma, and I think a lot of the older generations think that it's scam and all that stuff, but I do recommend people research in understanding the use case for Bitcoin, especially as a hedge against inflation. Now, if we take a look at the annual return on Bitcoin in the last 10 years, we can see it sitting on an average 68.3% a year. But for the sake of being on the conservative side, 
let's use the lowest return of the last five years at 49.3%. Plugging this number into my projection shows that if we do exactly the same plan as before, we'll hit that million dollar mark in eight years. Honestly, I'm quite satisfied with that. By that time, I would have had at least 10 years of working experience in this industry, which is quite crazy to think about. I want to point out that the numbers may or may not be off by a couple of percent here and there, but the difference in the order of magnitude between the number of years when you save only on salary versus putting your money in investments is massive. It will make a huge difference when your money compounds over the years, which is why it's very important for you to start investing. Now, the purpose of this video is not to discourage you guys to think that it'll take forever to get rich in cybersecurity. This is just mapping out the trend of my future based on my current situation from the worst case to the best case. And the main point is to use the salary from your nine to five job to fund for your investments so you can increase exponentially. Before I did this video, I never really thought about how long it would take for me to achieve this goal. I thought if I hop around jobs to get that 20% increase every three years, that would be the way to go. But it turns out it's still so difficult to achieve that million dollar status just on salary alone. I'm not saying that these type of investments are the only way to go. There are plenty of super smart people who has figured out many other ways to achieve this. I'm just your average guy, so this is what I think is the best low effort way to get that million dollar.